Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Good evening to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. Today is Thursday, the 24th of September. Today is the feast of Our Lady of Walsingham, who is the patron of our chapel here at St. Michael's. The candles that we light are symbols of the prayers of the scattered church, this church in, in heaven and on earth, the prayers that ascend to the throne of God even when we can't physically gather for worship. I have, in honor of Our Lady of Walsingham, I have brought out the icon that is in our chapel, lit a candle in front of that. I'm going to light another candle to symbolize the prayers of the church. We are also asking the prayers of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, as we gather in prayer this evening. You can do the same along with me if you'd like. And when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20 in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise he the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 85 and 86, beginning on page 438. Lord, thou art become gracious unto thy land. Thou hast restored the fortunes of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the offense of thy people and covered all their sin. Thou hast taken away all thy displeasure and turn thyself from thy wrathful indignation. Turn us, O God our Saviour, and let thine anger cease from us. Wilt thou be displeased at us forever, and wilt thou stretch out thy wrath from one generation to another? Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. I will hearken what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace unto his people and to his saints, and unto them that turn their heart to him. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springeth out of the earth, and righteousness hath looked down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give what is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall direct his going in the way. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve thou my soul, for I am godly. Save thy servant that putteth his trust in thee. Thou art my God, be merciful unto me, O Lord, for all the day long do I call upon thee. Comfort the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer, and ponder the voice of my humble desires. In the time of my trouble I will call upon thee, 
for thou hearest me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. There is not one that can do as thou doest. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. O, knit my heart unto thee, that I may fear thy name. I will thank thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will praise thy name for evermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the nethermost hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and a band of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before their eyes. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn thee then unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and help the son of thy handmaid. Show some token upon me for good, that they who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, hast helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Esther, the seventh chapter, beginning at the first verse. So the king and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther. And on the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, for our affliction is not to be compared with the loss to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he, that would presume to do this? And Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was in terror before the king and the queen. And the king rose from the feast in wrath and went into the palace garden. But Haman stayed to beg his life from Queen Esther, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. And the king returned from the palace garden to the place where they were drinking wine, as Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was. And the king said, Will he even assault the queen in my presence, in my own house? As the words left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Moreover, the gallows which Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, is standing in Haman's house, fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows which he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues with the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. 
he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel. As he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. And God did extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs or aprons were carried away from his body to the sick, and diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to pronounce the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Siva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Many also of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew and prevailed mightily. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues with the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. 
O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God most high, who didst endue with wonderful virtue and grace the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord, grant that we who now call her blessed may be made very members of the heavenly family of him who was pleased to be called the firstborn among many brethren, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Protect and prosper, O Lord, all those who labor at tasks of danger and difficulty, especially all of our frontline workers, that they may be preserved in safety and health, and grant that knowing the dangers which beset them, they may ever take thought one for another and be sustained by a sure trust in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now I would invite you to call to mind some time in the last 24 hours that you have been particularly aware of the presence of God. Where have you seen God at work in the world these days? And just as importantly, what have you seen God doing? Give thanks and praise for the gift of that experience you've had and pray for the grace and the strength and the courage to join in with what God is doing. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for joining us for prayer this evening. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer have been a blessing to you. And if so, I hope that I can in, you'll, you'll indulge me in just another moment as I put in a plug for our friends at the parish of St. Mary the Virgin. Uh, this, is, of course, is a great day to be uh, talking about St. Mary the Virgin as we keep the Feast of Our Lady of Walsingham. But the people and, our, the, and their priest at St. Mary's, they are praying daily services and times that are complementary to our own. So when we pray in the evening, as we did today, they prayed in the morning and vice versa. So you can join them tomorrow morning for morning prayer. You can join us for tomorrow evening for evening prayer. No, I'm doing it all wrong. There, yet... We're tomorrow morning, they're tomorrow evening. I'm sorry for all of that. The Parish of St. Mary the Virgin, their YouTube channel, there's a link up above me. I hope that you will share your love with them as well. And until we meet again, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.